This is how to make a beer can camera specifically for doing a six month duration photo. Uh, one thing about these cameras is they won't be out in the wind and the rain for six months so they've got to be of some sort of like fairly hardy material and the best you can use is aluminium or aluminium you can call it if you want, that's actually a proper word for it. Uh, and high one not a coca-cola one because the high ones enable the sort of uh, 5x7 photographic paper to fit it perfectly. Uh, and not steel either. Steel is uh, the magnetic one on a fridge door. This is non-magnetic. So an aluminium beer can is the right height and the right one to use. You take the top off. Now there is a way, a really good technique of taking the top off an aluminium can really safely and you can end up with a nice smooth edge. Um, probably show you that in a later, later time. Empty the can obviously first, which is the most important bit. Um, and you've got your empty aluminium can. Wash it out, dry it. Then use a piece of card. That is A4, 210 millimeter. Outer diameter of a can, strange but true, it's 210 millimeter. So it's a piece of A4 black light tight card. And then you just basically cut notches down it. Don't worry about how many. Don't chop your finger off, ah, like that. Ooh. Fold them over, Whee! Everything goes, falls over. And you cut notches like that, dead easy. Then you cut yourself a really bad circle, just something really hopeless and a bit pathetic, like that. And this gets made into the lightproof cap. Turn the can upside down. And then if you learn nothing else, learn how to tear gaffer tape, yeah? The elixir of life, if you can use gaffer tape, then you don't need anything, any dovetail joints or anything. Put your thumb on the edge and pull apart. You can imagine there's a sort of fold there and you're pulling paper apart and tearing it. That will tear the gaffer tape quite well. Fold this around the base. The most tricky bit about this when you're teaching kids to do it is tearing gaffer tape. That's why you often need adult supervision. And you put the actual tape over there. Don't tape it to the can. Just have it so it's loose like that. You'll often then find these notches are pointing upwards. Lift it up, crease them so they're nice and flat and horizontal. That means there's less light getting through. Then your really badly cut circle goes on top. Don't forget to put that on top. People often do. Then it's really a case of death by gaffer tape. Gaffer tape, you put it onto something dry, it stays waterproof. So that's why it's really nifty stuff and you can get it fairly cheap. One bit like that. Again, don't take the actual lid for the can. And now you're all going to be really tempted to do it crossways. Don't. Do it at a sort of jaunty angle. And then you use less gaffer. So you can get away with three bits of gaffer, like that. And then the last bit, oh, what a lovely noise. You actually put this bit high-ish up. So it's, people again want to try and be neat. Don't try and be neat. So you have it so it's going over the top a bit and then you fold this down like that and then just because you might as well because by now you'd be obsessed with using up as much gaffer tape as possible put the last bit on top like that that then comes off and goes over the top for your light proof lid dead easy uh, and by that time you've also learned how to tear gaffer tape which is essential right next bit is making the pinhole um, don't worry too much, there's half a ton of maths about this, but my mathematics are, use a pin, okay? Find a point on the can that you can identify, so here I'm gonna do it halfway up, yeah? And it's gonna be the letter M of premium, for some reason. Um, when pushing the pin in, hold it, push the pin in exactly at that direction, okay? So it's parallel. Don't let people push it in like that, so it can go like this and then go bang, and you get a pin in your eye. Well, it wouldn't happen probably, but I just don't want to see that happen. So you push the pin in, and the maths are push the pin in, take the pin out. That's the maths, okay? And you've got a really smallish hole of about one and a half, two millimetres in diameter. It doesn't matter, okay? Don't worry about the maths. The next bit is making a little lightproof shutter. So you get some insulation tape, which is lightproof. Small bit like that. Now it's sticky there, yeah, and making a shutter, you fold it onto itself so you have a sticky bit, yeah, yeah and a non-sticky bit. 
and you stick the sticky bit over the hole. Hence shutter. Don't stick the bit beside it, stick the sticky bit over the hole. That is your pinhole camera. What you put inside the can is light sensitive photographic paper. Don't think it's the same photographic paper you put through inkjet printers and stuff. This is light sensitive, the same stuff they've been using for hundreds of years, okay? Uh, get it online, basically. Most camera shops don't really stock it. But what you need to know is it's five by seven inches, not centimeters, because we don't do that, and semi-matte, not glossy. If you use glossy, you end up with little black lines, and you don't really want that after six months exposure. So five by seven, semi-matte, black and white photographic paper. It's not color, black and white. Normally, you would actually only open that box under a red safe light. It's sensitive to blue light. But since the photographic paper is going to be in here for six months of the sun pointing at it, yeah, it's, it's a peculiar thing. This basically you can almost do this uh, in normal lighting, not in sunlight, but in lighting like we have here, where it's quite bright and stuff. It will be fine to get a piece of photographic paper out and put it inside here. Now the photographic paper will I don't want it sitting in the light for too long but the photographic paper will curl right the way around the inside with about a one centimetre gap. And that gap is where the pinhole is. So you're not going to end up with a picture of a black dot. There's going to be a gap where the pinhole is. The actual picture you get is going to be about 160 degree, really wide angle. And the paper curls right the way around on the inside. So we get the photographic paper out. There it is. Oops. I'm not going to wave at you too long. You put it in, I can put my finger in there and I can feel the scratchiness where the hole is and I know therefore that the photographic paper isn't covering the hole and I put the lid on. That is fine, you could do that with a whole class, you can do it with about 20 people, just get them to keep their cameras open, one after another, photo paper in, lid on. Don't leave the paper lying around too long because like, it does go dark, even under artificial light, but you don't need to worry about a red light, just not sunlight, okay? What this stuff does, and I'm gonna show you here, is it goes dark when light touches it. So I'm just gonna put this on, and it's rather like getting a suntan. Over a long period of time, it goes darker and darker. So over maybe in 10 minutes, you'll see there's an image that's appeared. What's happened is all of it has gone dark. We can't see it yet, except for where I've put this. And this is after a few minutes, and this is what effect is that happens inside the camera over a long period of time. So this area below the ring of tape hasn't had any light hitting it. And as you can see there, we've got white, or comparatively white, where there's been no light hitting it, and it's gone dark and the rest of it. That's what happens inside the pinhole camera. It etches an image, in a way, using light onto the photographic paper. Now, you don't want to sort of like leave it out for too long, but even scanning the image won't have a massive effect on the final negative. Although after I've done the negative, I do put them into a dark material. Don't develop them, they'll just go black and you lose it. Don't fix it either. If you fix the actual picture, the image will wash off. But you end up with an undeveloped latent image. The same thing Fox Talbot played about with his photos. He didn't develop them, he just let the sun build the image up in the same way as, let's say, getting a suntan. So basically that will be in your pinhole camera here for three months, six months, whatever time you want. You could do it for as little as a month if you want. So photographic paper loaded up. The next thing to do is to seal your camera. More death by gaffer tape, but you don't want people taking the lids off. So we stick the lid onto the can. One piece going right the way around another piece overlapping it a bit where the water supposedly will flood out. What a noise. And then the last bit going over the top should make it waterproof. However, because it's a pinhole camera, you can actually install the camera upside down. It doesn't matter. And then water won't get in through there. Next bit is the image stabilization device, which goes onto the camera which you use basically to position the instruction sheet and the cable ties. I get them to put this in here so they don't lose it. 
And then, just to sort of almost force them through guilt, to actually make sure the camera gets installed, a couple of cable ties underneath, and that's the final object they'll take home and pester their parents to sort of say, I've got to do this for homework. Oh, can you put it up for me, please? Can't be bothered. Um, and that's the final camera. Uh, trickiest bit, tearing gaffer tape. The reason it won't work are because people uh, will put them on their mantelpieces and not follow the instructions. The main reason is people don't put them up. Uh, out of groups of 25 and 30, sometimes only two or three will put them up because they're worried they'll do it wrong. That's why I basically make the responsibility that of the parents and then the kids gets all the uh, glory and stuff of being able to see six months worth, worth of uh, sun moving across the sky. If you want to make a less conspicuous camera, something you can put out in the sort of public domain, you can make them far smaller. This one here is made out of a film pot. It's a little bit more complicated. You make a hole in the plastic pot, piece of aluminium cut from a beer can and a bit of a pinhole. Not quite as big as the other one. And then you just put a bit of photographic paper in the same way as the other one and there's a the shutter there. Take the camera down, okay? Um, it may be a bit wet due to condensation stuff, in which case under a sort of darkish lighting, just sort of like dry it out with a hair dryer until it gets dry. You don't want to scan anything that's wet, okay? So we bring the hair dryer down. You then, again, under darkish lighting, but it doesn't have to be complete dark or anything, you put it onto your flatbed scanner fairly quickly and then just simply Scan directly. File, import, blah blah blah. Don't preview the image, just scan directly. So click scan. I normally scan it at about 400 dpi, 600 dpi in colour. Even though it's a black and white image, scan it in colour because that pinky brown colour that the paper becomes when you invert the image into a positive, the invert of the colour pinky brown is blue and it gives the impression that the sky is blue and stuff. The image is scanned, I take it out, put it straight back into a camera, make it light tight again, just so the image is as stable as it can be. Then you end up with a negative image that you've scanned in. Digitally, image, adjust, invert, and you end up with an inverted image. And you can play around with the contrast, image, adjust, brightness, contrast, yeah, add sugar to taste, do anything you want really, up to you. Of course with this process we're not developing, we're not using chemicals, which is brilliant for schools and stuff, because there's no worry about using sort of developer stop bar fixer. We're just simply scanning into a computer and you should be able to find flatbed scanners around the place at schools to be able to use. Uh, there's no chemicals involved, just scan directly. If you develop the image it go black, if you fix it, it will just wash away. So no developing, no fixing, scan the image straight in and it becomes a digital file. Thank you.